everyone, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday, it is December 19th, the year is 2022. Happy holidays to you. We have so much fun stuff in store for you tonight. I have been giddy over tonight's live stream. We're just six days away from Christmas. And if you're like me, you're tying up all the loose ends, literally. So tonight I am going to teach you some really amazing gift tags for your holiday projects or perhaps your Christmas gift giving. We're gonna spruce those up really simple. The best part about tonight's project is you can use whatever you've got at home. Now I am gonna feature a die set that I have fallen in love with and it's tag dies. And wait till you see all the tags that I've made. But of course you can make your own tags as well. As a loving reminder, all the products I'm using can be found in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. Now, before we get started, there are a couple housekeeping items. The first is I wanna make sure you grab that free project sheet. The link is gonna be down in the video description below when tonight's live stream is over. And you're gonna to wanna to head over to page 15 of the 16 pages because we put an extra graphic in there of a collage of tags that are in addition to the ones I originally agreed to design for you tonight because the dies that I had originally planned on using have sold out. So then I was scrambling to get you some other ideas and oh well, I decided we're just gonna go give you a whole bunch. I think there's 11 tags different altogether in tonight's live stream. That project sheet is over, it'll be here available. Next, we want to make sure you are logged into your YouTube account amazingly easily by using your Gmail address. That's gonna be super important for tonight's live stream because we have our final night of the three nights of giveaways. Always a fun time here at Lisa Stamp Studio. You're gonna to need to be in the live chat being able to comment to win. And it's a random drawing. I'm gonna give you details about that in just a moment. And I wanna make sure I introduce you to tonight's YouTube moderator. That is Gina curcio Holly. You'll see Gina's name off to the side in blue. You might recognize that surname. Gina is my daughter. She's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio and an avid stamper. Been stamping with me the entire 24 years. I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. She's more than capable of answering your questions and providing you links during a live stream because there's no way I can keep up. All right, so are you excited about the giveaway tonight? So let me show you the slide. All right, when you hear the ho, 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 let me show you how it sounds. <laughs> All you'll need to do is type your full name in the live chat. Now, not now, okay, but during tonight's live stream demonstration. We will have several winners tonight, a total of four. It'll happen periodically during tonight's live stream. We are using land, randomlistpicker.org. So everybody who comments with their full name after the ho, ho, ho will go into that one first drawing and it's gonna pick a random winner and I can put your name here on the screen. And then we'll do that repeatedly until we give away all four prizes during tonight's live streaming. Now, very important, if your name gets picked, you're gonna go over to my website at lisastampstudio.com and click on contact and send me your full name and your mailing address so I can get your product gift off to you. I've got some goodies to send to you in the mail. All right, we are ready to get started. Let's go ahead and turn that camera down. I do wanna remind you that I do a live chat when tonight's video is over and I wanna make sure that you know to stick with me. I've got something really special to share with you at the end. All right, let's start off by showing you what we're using. These are the tailor-made tags. <laughs> My daughter's texting me going, you're out of focus again. Good heavens. Well, the good news is, Gina, you're gonna be here in a couple days and you can fix that for me. Tailor-made tags, I did take one of them out. It's right here. Love the graduating sizes. And you're gonna notice here that the tops are different on these. It even includes grommets. So if you wanna make those little fancy toppers here, lots and lots of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and put this off to the side because we're gonna be using this specific die tonight. Now, the very first thing I decided to do was kind of show you how the die works. Now, I've got a piece of cardstock here and of course the die. And those of you that have paper crafted before, you know how simple this is. Because I'm actually going to demonstrate several tags for you tonight, I'm going to fast forward to this and show you this. But the tag I'm gonna share with you first actually uses a smaller portion of this tag with the stitching. So let's get out my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. Isn't this adorable? 
All right, the good news is, is you can get one free in a starter kit starting January 5th. All the information's on my website under join. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that plate one, which is the basic platform. Plate two is obviously the clear mat that goes over the top that protects it. Let me move that up a little bit. I've got my cardstock. Now this is the mini machine. So please keep in mind, you are limited on the width here. So this is fantastic for those smaller piece dies or for those smaller embossing folders. This is fantastic because these little hinges come up and it's very compact and it's super light. Let's start by doing this. I'm gonna bring that die back in. I wanna make this tag smaller, but I want that cool stitching all the way around the outside. So let me show you what you do. You're just gonna lay this on top of here and all you have to do is kind of navigate the height and the width that you want. And you know what, let me hold this up to see if you can see it a little bit better. You can actually kind of feel how it rests inside those little notches. So let's make this even a little bit smaller yet. Once you feel it inside those notches, go ahead and put it on your platform. And to make sure that it doesn't shimmy, I've got my favorite post-it labeling and cover-up tape. Now, if you've been to my YouTube channel before, you know all about this stuff because it's a fan favorite. This is not a Stampin' Up! product, obviously, but I have it linked for you over on my website at lisastampstudio.com click on shop and craft room favorites. All I did was pull some of that tape off. I went ahead and I anchored it down here. I did rip it up to make it a little bit smaller. I've got my second plate here and I'm gonna offset those just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank this, okay? So let me give this a little bit of a push and then we're gonna get this started. Now you know all I have arthritis, so Things are hard for me to use sometimes when I'm doing the cranking job, which is often reason why I don't crank on camera <laughs> because it looks really hard and it's really not. So let me set that off to the side. Here comes that first plate. Look what it just did. It just cut off that bottom, but wait until you see the top portion. Now save that tape, my friends, because you can use that again and again until it's dismembered, usually about six times. But looky, looky, we have a smaller tag with that beautiful stitching all the way around. Now, just to jump ahead to give you an option on this tag, I'm gonna show you the first tag I made and then we're gonna do some stamping. So here is the tag that I made. Super cute, huh? So all I did was I die cut a full tag from this amazing Gingham Designer Series paper. It's in my online store. It's being retired, so make sure you grab it before it's sold out. It's only available till January 4th or if it sells out before then. So all I did was I used that shorter portion on top of there. So these are double stacked with some dimensionals. I added just a simple snowflake image. Just grab something you've got and a to and from and some baker twine. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, we're gonna go through more of these. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Let me move that one off to the side and let's go ahead and let's work on the next project. Now for this one, I've die cut a red tag and I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping on here, but I need to protect my work surface. So I've got one of the small grid sheets here. I saw someone say that I'm out of focus and I shouldn't be because the overhead camera is auto focus. So that should be fine. We've got the real red ink pad and this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink is going to match the stamp. But you know what? I decided mm, I'm not gonna stamp on this one. This time I'm actually going to use some dies. Let me show you the next set of dies I'm gonna bring in here. This is called the Gnomes dies and these are also available in my online store. They are not selling out. So you can go ahead and grab these now. I did do the die cutting ahead of time on these just to save a little bit of time. I used the same designer series paper you just saw which is that gingham. So I've got a hat and I've got a beard and I've got some boots and I've got a nose. Now you're probably thinking, well, how are we gonna piece all this together? So let me show you. We're gonna start with a silicone craft sheet. I love this because liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it. Gnomes are super popular right now. You cannot go wrong, gender neutral. All I'm going to do is I'm gonna start building this. Let me show you the beauty of this die. You're gonna notice here that there's a little indentation, or like almost like a score line, I hope you can see that, right around his nose. That is the cheat mark. So I'm gonna come in with my liquid glue. This is sold in my online store. I love to get it started here on my silicone craft sheet to make sure that it's not gonna come out in a clump. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm not a really good glue girl. I tend to use too much, so I'm a little heavy handed. That hat, 
mimics those score lines. So all you have to do is just kind of stick it right on top of there. Isn't that perfect? All right, now we're gonna move over to the boots. Now, I don't know if this camera is gonna pick it up or not, but there's little X's here on the boots. Do you see it like faux stitching? That actually comes as part of the die. Now let's talk about where this is going to go. Now you're thinking there's no score lines at the top on where to attach it, but it's super simple because what I decided to do was to move his beard between his feet. Now, obviously there's no right or wrong way. You can move him lower or you can move him higher, but to make it easy, I just add the glue right here at the top, okay? The liquid glue is very, very strong. There's no reason for you to use a whole ton of it. It's gonna work fantastic. Now here comes the little nose. This all comes from that same package of dies. And I'm reaching over for my little mini dimensional. So these little small dimensionals are nice and sticky on one side. I'm gonna take off that little paper backing with my pierce tool on the other side. And you see the bottom here of where that stitching is? Now we have a gnome. Now, before I add him, we wanna do one last thing. I'm gonna bring in my Memento Black ink pad, and I just hijacked a to and from from another stamp set. Use anything you've got. You can even handwrite it if you'd like. So I'm stamping that on there. It's gonna be on my back side because guess what? He's so darn cute, he's gonna take up the front. So we're gonna come over now with some of the dimensionals, and we're just gonna brace these here on the back. Oftentimes, I like to use my dimensionals as double duty to anchor down those extra areas. And I'm a big fan of kind of making sure that these are well balanced. I know, I'm kind of using too much, right? Can you ever have too many dimensionals? I don't think so. That piercing tool on my take your pick tool is my best friend because what it does is it actually pulls off those backings for those arthritic hands of mine. I'm gonna go ahead and add him here. Oh my gosh, does this sound adorable? Here's the baker's twine. And I get asked this question quite a bit. What's the easiest and the best way to thread these? So I'm just gonna throw my thread in half, leaving a loop here at the top. I am gonna go from the front to the back. That's the key if you want that pretty front. Open up the loop and then pull those raw ends through the loop and that gives you that nice little finished front on your tag. Isn't that cute? And you got little to and from here. So adorable. Okay, but we got more. Let's move on to the next one. Now we're going to do a little bit of background stamping on this one. So I'm going to bring that paper in to protect that work surface and we've got that red tag. I'm going to go over to my red ink pad. Now this is the beauty, like I said, is the color coordination. So the ink pad is going to match the cardstock. There's no second guessing. Love that. Now I took some snowflake images from a stamp set called Christmas Scotty. Sold out, all right, but it's okay. If you're a stamper, you've got snowflake stamp somewhere, just grab it. But I'm calling your attention to this because it's gonna make more sense when I show you some of the other cards. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up. I'm gonna go ahead and let's put one snowflake here and let's add, oh, let's add another cluster down here at the bottom, okay? Stamp off my excess ink that keeps my scrub kind of clean. And then here comes the beauty of that to and from one more time. I'm gonna do it first this time because it's gonna give me an idea of where to navigate my image. So there's our to and from, but this time I am going to use what's called the Scotty Dog Builder Punch. So it's a builder punch because it has two images in one. I know the glare from the lights is bad. So we've got the dog and we have the bow. This is in my online store. It is still available. I have no idea how, so go and grab it. We are going to punch ourselves one of the dogs, okay? I'm not gonna use the black bow today. And then I'm gonna grab some of that same designer series paper package we've been using, that gingham, and we're gonna punch ourselves a bow, okay? So now we have a bow and we've got our dog. Wait till you see how quick this comes together. And this is something great for the kids. Now I'm gonna flip this over once again, and I like to use dimensionals. I'm a big fan of these things because they make me look like a professional. They make my projects look a little elevated, so get a little bit of a 3D look, especially for something like this that you know you are going to actually hand deliver to someone on their gift. So here's my little Scotty dog, and let's take that bow, and let's flip this one to what's gonna be my wrong side. And I'm gonna go for a mini dimensional on this to see if it's gonna fit better, yep. And let's take that off, but wait till you see, we gotta add a little embellishment to this. So there we go, we've got our gingham bow, and I'm gonna bring in the festive pearls. Now, I used up a lot of the gold ones, so I've got another package here, but these red ones are beautiful. 
The good news about these is they are being carried over. You do not have to worry about these retiring. They are available in my online store. I love this red. It's like a pearly red. This is a very soft minty green and then silver and of course the gold, which I showed you here. I used a lot of those already. Okay, we've got our tag. Let's go ahead and let's add our twine. Now twine comes in lots of colors. The Baker's Twine Essential Pack in my online store includes numerous colors in one package, and they're all neutral. And I love the fact that I can use quite a bit of it, and it's really, really inexpensive. So there you go. I've just threaded that one, and we've got tag number two. Really cute, huh? All right, we're moving on. This one, I have to say, is probably my favorite, and then I have lots more to share with you. We're going to work with some circle dies. So I'm using the layering circles dies. Now you're going to see their cascading sizes of the circles and inside the same package, you get the scallops, which is fantastic because these can layer inside each other or you can mix and match. Fantastic. Again, in my online store. Now ahead of time, just to save a little bit of time, I've got a white one from white cardstock and a black and white one. Again, this is all from that gingham paper. Let me move that out of the side. Let's bring in my silicone craft sheet here. Now you may want to use liquid glue and that's fine, but I'm going to speed things up for tonight's live stream and I'm just going to use my stamp and seal plus. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add adhesive on it all the back side. So I'm going to use it generously since I'm not using glue. You are literally going to mimic the designer series paper to the cardstock. And you might be wondering why. And it's because we want to reinforce the base of this. Now what we're going to do is we need to chop a little bit of this off. So let me grab my paper trimmer. I love this trimmer. And if you've watched my video channels before, you know that it includes both the scoring and the cutting blade. They navigate up and down out of the way so you can keep them on the track at the same time. Straight edge for cutting because I can't do anything straight. There's one here and there's another straight edge here. It does extend past 17 inches. It's got a little hook if you wanna hang it. It's nice and lightweight. This is protected, so none of these lettering or numbering will rub off. Fantastic. But this clear guide is a champ. We're gonna to wanna to cut this down to just a tad under two inches. This is a three inch circle, by the way. Now I'm gonna be very cognizant to make sure my pattern is going in the direction I want it. So keep that in mind if you're using florals or other plaids, just keep that in mind. I found that that actually works better. Again, I'm resting that circle up here against the edge and I'm gonna go just under two inches. Let me move that over a little bit. That looks pretty straight, again, towards my edge. And here comes that black cutting blade and I'm gonna slice. And that's gonna have cut off this area. Yeah, that blade is nice and sharp. It went through both of these with no trouble. All right, so let's come back to this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a little red circle and a piece of red cardstock. These were all cut from the dies as well. It's just the smallest one that's here. Just like we've done before, we are going to layer these together. So I'm going to go ahead and just use adhesive for the sake of the live string. And I'm going to put those together. We're not going to do any cutting here, but we need to punch a hole to make the tag. So I'm using a 1 8 inch circle handheld punch. I'm sure you've got one in your artillery. I'm going to go ahead and put that in and I'm going to make a little hole here near the top. You want it near the top, but you don't want it so shallow that it would rip when you pull the twine through. Next step. This is going to come here and we are going to add a little bit of adhesive to the opposite end of where that hole is punched. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that here. And then I'm going to add this to the top. Do you guys see where I'm going with this? So I've got kind of half and half here. All right, next step. We have another circle. This is identical to this one. But this time I'm going to grab my paper snips and we're going to do a little what I call kindergarten cutting. This is the fun part. Take your scissors and you're just going to snip around the edges. How many of you remember doing this when you were young maybe elementary school, making that faux grass on your construction projects. You had construction paper and we made little fringes all along the edges to make it look like grass. Well, that's kind of what we're doing here. So I'm looking and I'm just kind of leaving space between each of them. I'm going to flip this over and I am going to grab one of those full-size dimensionals again. 
and we're going to add that right here in the center. Then we're going to pull off that paper backing and this is going to go over here. Remember, your dimensional is only in the middle, so we're not going to impede on that hole. We are going to scrunch this up just a little bit, just like we did on that grass on that construction paper many decades ago, right? Just to give that a little bit of life, but we're not done yet. We've now got another piece of that designer series paper that is identical. It's just a strip. Keep in mind, all the cutting dimensions for these are gonna be in that free project sheet for you. So I'm gonna come back now to that grid paper that we had used previously, and I'm gonna lay that here. Now we're gonna do the to and from on this a little bit different, isn't it? Because it's not wide enough to accommodate both words. So I'm gonna show you what you can do. Actually you can ink half at a time because you see how there's room in between? But in this case, we can do it even easier than that. We're gonna ink up the whole thing and we're gonna stamp the two here. We're gonna ink it up again and we're gonna stamp the from here. We're gonna leave room there so we can sign. If you have a stamp where the words are too close together or they're horizontally, you can use a piece of scotch tape to cover this up, make yourself a little tab and then pull it off. Let me show you. This is a great way for you to use your images and your stamp sets in a really fun way and just picking up certain greetings. So I'm gonna cover this up and making a little tab. That's gonna give me a little area to kind of hold it with my fingers. Attach that to the block. Ink up just the word that you want. Take off the tape. Super duper important. We're gonna go up here and now we have the word to. Very important that you clean your stamp, which I'm doing right off camera. You check it to make sure there's no residual pigmentation on that stamp and you would do the same thing with the other part of the word. It's a great way for you to expound on your purchases so that you can pick up partial greetings and partial images. All right, I'm gonna move that off to the side and now we're gonna come back here. I am going to flip this over and I want dimensionals, but I wanna show you something. You saw these real fun shapes, right? That really isn't easy for me, so I wanna show you a great way to use up the borders here. There is a border on all the dimensionals that are uncut and you might think that's a waste, but I want to tell you what, I absolutely love these because when I have projects like this, I can go ahead and use that border to my advantage. I'm going to take off that paper backing once again. This is going to go at the very bottom of my little snow cap and let's talk about the twine. Again, you're going to fold it in half. We're going to go from the front to the back. So you're just going to slightly bend this forward. Obviously, I could have done this before I put the pom-pom on. That probably wouldn't have been a whole lot easier. All right, this is where I'm going to use my take your pick tool. And then we're just going to poke that through. And then we'll get that started. All right, open up that loop just like we've done before. And then you're going to take those raw ends and pull them through. And now we've got a little reinforcement there, so we don't have to worry about that designer series paper ripping. Oh my gosh, is this not adorable? So, so cute. And if you need more room, you could do the to and from on the back. And I love this because it looks finished. It doesn't look mishmashed. The great thing about the designer series paper, because it is double-sided, you could do it again on the other side and have a 3D tag. But isn't this simple? It's a great way for you to use your circle dies. All right, now I've got so many more cards to share with you. Oh, we're going to do our giveaway. Did you hear the ho, ho, ho? Right now, you need to put your first and last name inside the live chat. That's the way that you win. First and last name, we're going to let the random picker choose that name and we'll pull it up here on the screen. So kind of just to recap what we've gotten so far while you type your name in, we've got these two here and I'm grabbing my third one out of my little container. I've got containers stacked all over the place with really cute tags. So we have these four that we've got already, but I got lots more. I can see the machine is spinning names. Let's see if it's picked one. And it looks like it has. The winner is, did it come up? Oh, I'm waiting to see. The winner is, there it is, it's Lorraine Chrisman. Congratulations to you, Lorraine. You are our winner. Yay! Lorraine, go over to my website, click contact, give me your name and your address. You are the first winner for tonight's giveaway. Congratulations to you. Woohoo! way to go. All right, if these are cute, I've got lots more cute ones. Here we go. So let me push these off to the side. These next tags are actually coming from product that is now sold out but that means lots of you already have it. 
Now, I want to call your attention to this because almost all stampers have a Christmas tree stamp and a Christmas tree die. Any nostalgic stamps and dies are going to work for you. Okay, so I want you to keep that in mind, even though that these products themselves are not available, look through your artillery to create them. The secret weapon is the tailor made tags. This is going to work fantastic for all your projects. All right, so here comes the first one. This one I just made very, very simple. White tag, cut that designer series paper short, stamp my to and from here at the bottle, and a very simple solid die tree or a punch, added my twine. Cute, huh? All right, I wanna make sure these are all inside your vision so you can see them all. All right, here we go to the next one. This time, I actually die cut an opening to create a negative in the crumb cake cardstock, and I put the designer series paper on the back. So there were two tags cut here, the crumb cake and the designer paper. This is called a negative image. So all we did was die cut the opening, so we would have had a tree from crumb cake. Don't worry, it didn't get wasted, wait. Simple, simple, simple. Remember, we would have die cut the tree to make the opening. I didn't have the heart to waste it, so this is what I did. I used it here, and I used one of the outlines to the die set, did it two different ways, stamped my snowflakes, my two from, added some more of those same festive pearl gems. Super cute, aren't they? This is something the kids can do with you. They're on Christmas break right now. Let them have some fun. Here's another one. I know you have either an ornament punch or an ornament die. Add those to these amazing tag dies and you're going to have some really fabulous cards. The twine is great, isn't it? Because it really picks up those bold colors. And I love the simplicity, wintry, woodsy feel of this designer series paper. All right, we're not done yet. This is another Scotty tag. Now this one came from the actual stamp set itself. Now you remember I told you the stamp set sold out. I know, boo hiss, boo hiss. This is why you have to shop the Last Chance products now because they sell very, very quickly. Some of them are marked down up to 60%. But I wanna call your attention to this ribbon that was in here for the next tag. So again, just use the stamps and I just punched it out using that builder punch. So it's the same layout as this one, just different images. All right, here comes that one I was referencing. So that ribbon stamp that was here, I used to create the ribbon to my ornament. This is just a tiny piece of square cardstock, circle die, die punched, die or punched, circle I should say, Oh, I'm sorry, snowflake, and then add an embellishment. This can be anything. It can be a couple layers of circles to look like a 3D ornament. We're talking easy. To and from on the back for this one, just brought in that red with that red ink, which gave us this one. All right, we got more. And how about this one? Same exact concept as here, except for this time I used the coordinating stamp to the die, which means I actually traced the opening on the designer series paper, removed the top half, stamped, so that when I put them together, they were lined up. I mean, how fun is that? Isn't that great? All right, but this last one, I have to tell you, is probably one of my favorites because of the detail. Same concept we've done here with a split away is this. Now, I hate to tell you this, but these flurry dies are already sold out for good reason. But Stampin' Up! makes lots of incredible dies. And I want you to keep in mind that some of the dies in the packages that we sell not only die cut, but they die cut partially, which means you're going to have some areas that are attached here at the bottom and the other areas that are going to open, which is beautiful for layering because that designer series paper, paper just kind of peeks through just a little bit. One simple embellishment to match my twine. Really, really pretty. Lots and lots and lots of tags here. Oh, wow, there's another ho, ho, ho. All right, go ahead and put your first and last name right now inside the live chat. We're going to do that random picker once again to pick the winners. Don't go away because you know there's going to be a live chat coming up. And I got something really special to share with you. So I've got to move all of this out of the way. Hold on one second. I'm going to switch cameras here so that I can actually see you. And then we're going to do the fancy part of pulling up your names here. I can see it scrolling the names right now. Let me see if it's picked a winner. Hold on one second. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Does it have one? I'm looking. Uh, let's see. Yes, Connie, you're the winner. Yay, Connie, congratulations.
Connie, do me a favor. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com. Click on contact and send me your full name and shipping information so I can get your prize off to you. All right. What do you say? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now we're going to cram them all in. All right. Let's do another one. I see it spinning already. I want to make sure I clear this so that it's not spinning from the previous ho, 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 that's scrolling for the new one. All right, let's see. They're rolling in here so quickly. I have to just make sure that it gives us a chance to catch up. You know computers, right? All right, so let me just scroll, scroll. Let's make sure we've got it caught up. It is, it's catching up. That's one thing about live stream. Obviously, this sucks a lot of bandwidth, so we make sure that our Wi-Fi connection here is good and strong for you. Super excited to see who this next winner is. All right, first and last names here in the live chat right now. And let's see if it's picked a winner. The winner is, is it coming up there yet? I'm waiting for the software. It's always fun. There it is, Marsha Hunt. You're the winner. Congratulations. Marsha, you're our number three winner for the three nights of giveaways. Go over to my website, click on contact, give me all your information so I can get your product in the mail to you. All right, we've got one more giveaway. And I've got something really, really special to share with you. Okay. And actually, it's kind of a thank you thing I want to share with you. So let's go ahead and turn that camera down. Oh, let's give you the next live date before I turn the camera down. I want to let you know that there is going to be a one week skip because of Christmas. I will be back live with you on Monday, January 2nd. So we're going to take a little time off here at the studio to enjoy family and friends for the Christmas holiday. So we'll be back in two weeks from today, which is January 2nd. Make sure you mark your calendar. All right. Are you ready to see that? All right. Let's make a little space here. All right, here we go. Let me move the tags out of the way. The good news is, guess what? Some of these tags are going to our winners tonight with their goodie boxes. Isn't that fun? All right, let me make a little bit more room. So this is my big thank you for you tonight. I am going to lay this here and tell you that I cannot thank you enough for this. This came in the mail on Saturday, and I about squealed in delight. And this is because of you. So I wanted to share it with you. I have just earned my platinum YouTube play button with YouTube. We have surpassed 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. We are super duper duper excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for your participation. I don't know why they put a mirror in it. <laughs> I get to see myself when I lift it up. But I'm going to display it here in the studio. And honestly, this has very little to do with me and everything to do with you because I would have never earned this without you watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing because that's the best way to get informed of what's going on here at Lisa Stamp Studio. Like I said, January 2nd is going to be the next day that we're going to be live and we'll make sure we have a great spot for that play button here in the studio. Subscribe, click the bell icon and the, <laughs> word, <laughs> and the word all. There's our final ho, ho, ho for the giveaway. Make sure you stick around for the live Q&A. If not, I look forward to seeing you in two weeks after we have the holidays. All right, go ahead and put your first and last name here in the live chat. I'm going to clear this to make sure that it's all caught up with the system and then it'll pick another random winner. Um, as you're typing your names, and I'm just gonna stall for a couple seconds so that the system can catch up. I wanna wish you and your family the happiest of holiday seasons, whether you celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, just be blessed. And I'm hoping that 2023 is going to be a year filled of health and happiness and prosperity for you and your family. Thank you so much for joining me here. It means the world to me. Now don't go away because we got to get that winner pulled up here on the screen. And then we're going to do that live Q&A. All right, let's see if it's ready. Let's see. Is it ready? Let's see. Did it pull up a name? I'm always waiting. And the winner is... Brenda, you are the winner. Awesome, Brenda. Congratulations to you. Brenda, head over to my website, click on contact and give me your full name and address so that I can get your goodies out in the mail to you. Fantastic. Congratulations to you. Way to go. All right, let me move that play button out of the way because I'm going to do some live Q&A. If you're leaving us tonight, I just want to remind you to head over to my website, scroll all the way to the bottom, and you're going to see the word subscribe. You're going to want to click on that because I'm going to send you a free weekly e-newsletter not shared in any of my other platforms. It's a no-frills email that goes out every Thursday, and I would love to include you. All right. 
Let's go ahead and let's do some Q&A now. I'll give you guys just a second to type in your questions. And to do so, you'll need to use the letter Q and a colon and then follow it with your question because then we can filter it here on the computer system. Highlight your question here on the screen so that we can answer it for everyone. All right, so let me go over and let's do that little filter thing. I'm a one-man show, so I'm going to do all of this by myself. All right, let me go up here to the top and we are going to add that in. It uh, doesn't matter if you use upper or lower case. And there is a delay between when I speak and when you type. So oftentimes I may not see it first. Uh, let's see. Okay, Gina has her first question, which I think is adorable. All right, Gina. Let me see. There you go. Gina says, what's my favorite Christmas tradition? Mm, there's so many. Um, just for those of you that don't know, I have eight Christmas trees. Yeah. Um, two of them are eight footers. I'm crazy. The rest of them are four footers and three footers. I love Christmas. But traditions, oh, I have a bunch. Um, I absolutely love stocking gifts. So I, everybody has a stocking and they all get gifts inside. And silly things, essential things, lots and lots of fun. And cinnamon rolls on Christmas morning. And our traditions have evolved over the years. So it's lots and lots of fun. And you know, you're going to be here, Gina. Thank you for the fun question. All right, let's see. We've got another question here that we can ask. Um, I'm scrolling. Bear with me. And Kimberly has a question. Have you ever accidentally put an inked stamp in another color? Oh, yeah. Of course I have. I think every stamper has done that, Kimberly. You're not alone. So how do you fix it? That's an excellent question. All right, so let's do this. I'm going to turn the camera down, and we're going to do a quick example here. Let me move that computer mouse out of the way. Typically, it's a disaster when you have a very light color, right? Like maybe a yellow, and then you've accidentally put the black inside. Ooh, yucky. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to take a white paper towel. I want to make sure that it's a paper towel of good quality that doesn't have any colored printing on it because sometimes I have found over the years that that can transfer. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of ball it up to give yourself like a little area to, to work with, and you're literally going to dab and lift out the negative color, which in this case would have been the black. Dab and lift, dab and lift, and you're going to have to reposition or get a new paper towel to lift up as much as you can. Then when that's done, and you're not going to like this, but you're going to flip this upside down on some scrap paper that you're probably going to want a few sheets for, and you are going to tap. And the reason you're doing that is you want to suck out some of the ink that's in here. You may notice that some of that black comes out with it. And yes, does that suck out the ink? It sure does. And the reason is, is we've got to get out the pigmentation from the wrong color. Once that's done, you can go ahead and you can re-ink your ink pad. And if you're wondering how to do that, I actually have a video about that here on my YouTube channel under a YouTube short. Just go here to my channel and just search ink pad and a whole bunch are going to come up and be able to provide you with the instructions on that. That 90% of the time salvages it, believe it or not. It's worth a try before buying a new one, right? All right. And let's see. I am scrolling for more questions. Uh, let's see. Terry has a question. How can you clean a dye? Another great question. Okay, here we go. Back down here and let me show you. Let me pull out. I've got this dye here. Let's use this one. Let's say perhaps you've got adhesive here, something sticky. Obviously, if it's cardstock, you can use your take your pick tool and get them out of the negative areas. But I want to show you one more thing. Hold on. Let me pull, reach over for it. This is the dye brush attachment to the take your pick tool. All right. Now, I've been beating mine up, so bear with me here. So this is the same as this. All I did was I unscrewed the top from here, which is the putty tip, and you can put in the dye brush attachment. So this just kind of swirls on. It comes with this and it comes with a foam mat. Now this is what you see as some of the foam mat because I was really aggressive. I had a very detailed dye and I rub over this and that releases all the small pieces. This is in my online store. But if you're talking about cleaning a dye because it's sticky or it's dirty, okay. So here's my easiest way, let me show you alcohol prep wipe to the rescue. These work amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and I am just going to take this over my die. And I'm just going to rub it to clean it off. Remember that these are metal, even though that they're thin, so you can't hurt it. And I'm just going to clean it off. So if there's any sticky on here, you can just remove it very, very easily. I want to give you one more tip. 
While you got that alcohol prep pad out, how many of you have your die cutting machine and you tell me it's not sticking well to your surface, it's sliding? Clean those little feet off. Oh my gosh, you won't believe the difference when you get all the grime off of there. And I just happened to do this one today. So it looks really, really clean. But that's another great tip for you. All right, let's do a couple more questions here. All right, lots of good questions tonight, Terry. That was a really good one. Thank you for asking. All right, um, Beth has a question. Let's get you pulled up, Beth. What is your favorite stamp set in the new catalog? And I'm assuming Beth is talking about the brand new mini catalog. Hold on. And that is coming out January 5th. Oh, goodness gracious. That is a tough one. There's 90 pages in here. I cannot open it on camera. My favorite. Okay. I've really only had the products for a few days, and I've only used maybe three stamp sets yet. Oh, but I think my new favorite might be Share a Milkshake. It is a bundle, so it has stamps and dyes. So not only can you make milkshakes, you could make ice cream. And if you know me, I love sweets, which is why I have to exercise every day. I also love conversation bubbles, stamps and dyes. I know you might not thought I picked that. I love whimsical stamps. Of course, there's so many beautiful florals in there, but it's just too soon for me to be able to tell, Beth. Check back with me in a couple months. I'll be able to tell you for sure. All right, let's do one more question here. Uh, I'm scrolling to try to keep up with you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Oh gosh. What's your favorite? Okay. I think I've answered them all. Okay. Oh, there's one more here from Lynn. I missed Lynn. Let's bring up your question. How long do you keep an ink pad? Lynn forever. These ink pads are not consumable products. So unless you make a huge inking mistake, like we just talked about with the black ink on here, there's no reason to throw this way. I just open up and I re-ink it. Now, if you ever have an ink pad that you've not taken care of, which means for whatever reason you spilled something in it, like a soft drink, or perhaps it was staying out in the, whole, in the cold or the heat too long, and that reformulates the ink, then of course you'd have to pitch it and get a new one, but I don't replace them. I just re-ink them. I mean, these are a great investment. You're gonna spend the money once, then you're gonna buy the small re-ink, uh, the re-inker for just a few dollars and you are good to go. All right, I think that answers all the questions for tonight, my friends. Merry, Merry Christmas to you and your family and Happy New Year. I will see you on the flip side in two weeks. This is our final video for 2022. Have a blessed holiday season. Bye-bye, everyone.